Ethernet switches. They seem pretty straightforward, right? Well, they are. But there are a few important things you should know. Yeah, and let's start at the very beginning. Managed versus unmanaged switches. What's the difference? Hey everyone, so as you may have noticed, things have been a little different lately, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're all bad. Actually, I'm kind of liking having my own table here. Yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to talk about differences. Oh, you mean like the differences between a clothesline and a lariat, right? So like in a clothesline, you come in with a straight what? arm. You don't no, bend. Lariats whoa, though, no, no, you... no, 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 no. We're not here to talk about wrestling. No, here. we're always here to talk about wrestling. Uh, no. We are, we are here to talk about differences, though. Okay. Like the differences between managed and unmanaged switches. Dang. All right. <laughs> well, before we get into managed versus unmanaged switches, let's quickly review what a switch does in general. Industrial Ethernet is all over manufacturing floors and processing plants, and it touches virtually every industrial application you can think of. And just like the consumer Ethernet switches in your work office or your home, their basic function is to create networks by giving you more drops or ports to connect that ethernet signal. Basically, think of them as an ethernet distribution box. Right, so to give you an example of what might happen on the factory floor, here we have a typical network device, like this router. As you can see, this is a four port device. So let's say three ports are being used for I.O. and the last one is connected to an HMI. Well, then, obviously, you're out of ports. Right. So what happens if you need to add two energy meters to the network? That's where an Ethernet switch comes into play. By adding in a simple switch, like this one, to the local area network, or LAN for short, you can extend from the router to the switch, and that now gives you five more ports. This allows you to add those two new energy meters, plus it gives you three extra ports for future additions. So in that way, it is like an Ethernet distribution box. Great points, Karen. Now, an important thing to remember here is that Ethernet distribution box analogy. It applies to both managed and unmanaged Ethernet switches. That's because despite their differences, their core functions are the same. Switches, forward frames, or data packets coming from end devices, like these energy meters, and they forward them to their proper destinations. As part of that, both managed and unmanaged switches also learn the network they are a part of. Right, and now that we have a better idea of what an industrial Ethernet switch does, let's get into the differences between managed and unmanaged switches. Yes, let's start with unmanaged Ethernet switches. <laughs> unmanaged switches allow Ethernet devices to communicate with one another, such as an energy meter to a PLC. With that, you'll often hear the term plug and play used because unmanaged switches are pretty much just that, plug and play. They're manufactured with a fixed configuration and don't allow any changes to that configuration. In essence, an unmanaged switch allows devices to talk to one another, but that's pretty much it. For any function other than basic network communication, you'll need to turn to a managed switch. Managed switches offer the same core features as unmanaged switches, but they also give you much, much more. How much more, Karen? <laughs> well, a whole lot more, Jeremy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and that more, well, it comes in the form of more flexibility. Managed switches allow you to manage, configure, and monitor the settings of your local area network, or that LAN. This includes controls over LAN traffic, prioritizing certain channels, and the ability to create new virtual LANs to keep smaller groups or devices segregated all of which help manage traffic more efficiently. Right, so for example, users may want to manage network traffic to optimize their system performance. This idea of network configuration is where you may hear the term SNMP used. SNMP stands for Simple Network Management Protocol, and it's used to relay network configuration data to network engineers that may be remote. Yeah, so when you hear that expression, I'm gonna remote in, now you know that SNMP is part of what makes that possible. SNMP allows those remote engineers to set configuration parameters from anywhere in the world, 
which in turn reduces troubleshooting time and increases system uptime. Yeah. Now another key feature that sets managed Ethernet switches apart is the idea of redundancy. Now another key feature that sets managed Ethernet switches apart is the idea of redundancy. Oh, okay. I, I see what you did see, there. See, you catch that, that one? You right. like that, that huh? Was, that Not so boring now, huh? <laughs> no, that was, that was actually kind of funny. And yeah, I am the life of everybody. <laughs> managed switches offer the ability to duplicate and recover network data. In many industrial applications, redundancy is critical in the event of a network outage or if an end device goes offline. In other words, if one of these two energy meters we were talking about earlier goes offline, a managed switch can work with the remaining meter to maintain communication and keep data flowing. Right, and a final feature to highlight with managed Ethernet switches is security. The security features vary in different managed switches, but most tend to include features like data encryption, access control lists to keep out unauthorized users, and the ability to create VLANs, or virtual LANs. These features are used to isolate parts of your network so only users with proper authorization can access that data. Yeah, so that was a pretty quick overview of the differences between managed and unmanaged switches. But there is one more difference that we need to point out. And you probably guessed it, that's price. <laughs> With their simple approach and technological constraints, you can find a basic unmanaged five or eight port switch for as little as 50 to $100. Right, but managed switches will set you back much more. The market price can range anywhere from $1,500 to $2,800 per switch. But it's important to note that the prices here are more affected by the different feature sets, such as security and access controls, rather than the number of ports. Right. So, long lesson short, you'll have to pay more for the features of a managed Ethernet switch. Right. So, to recap, the functional differences between managed and unmanaged switches are as follows. While both allow multiple Ethernet devices to communicate, managed switches give you more, like network configuration, SNMP capability, redundancy, and enhanced security. And, of course, the price. Of course. <laughs> so, there you have it the key differences between managed and unmanaged Ethernet switches. If you like this video, be sure to wallop that like button. Wallop? Yeah. Okay. Or you could clothesline it or lariat it or whatever that is. <laughs> also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of this awesome content and sign up for notifications so you can get our videos as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah, and, and since you brought it up, just so you know, clothesline, straight arm, oh lariat. God. You bend just a little bit. You hook around the neck. <laughs> drive the opponent down. It's subtle, but it's oh.